uh, the same uh, the same algorithms for uh, like Windows, Linux, OS X, and so forth. And uh, a problem related to this is that we need to find um, to create like an, ab an abstract language to describe the gadgets because at the moment they are, as I said, really architecture specific. So what we want to have in the future is a way to uh, generic generically describe them so that we don't have to uh, have a different like interpreter for each uh, architecture. And the third problem is try to avoid uh, are to solve problems by the constraint solver. So what, the, what this means is uh, we, we want to find an algorithm that will basically select um, the gadgets so that they are the lowest possible amount of side, uh, of side, uh, side effects. This way the constraint solver would not, will not face really R to compute constraint to, to be uh, satisfied. And finally, since uh, on uh, like x86 uh, um, operating systems and possibly in a near future on uh, mobile, uh, mobile, mobile platforms as well, we're going to see uh, the address space layout randomization. What we want to do is to make sure that our tool is kind of able to circumvent this. So uh, what we are planning to, to, to do are mainly two, th two things. The first one is verify whether or not it is possible to actually create meaningful payload without having Turing completeness. Uh, the reason behind this is in some other space, um, there are some specific libraries that are not randomized. So if we are able to create payloads just uh, by just having a few uh, gadgets, then we don't need Turing completeness and unless the entire other space is, rando is randomized, uh, the tool is still usable. And the other thing that we plan to do is to make sure that our tool is able to generate what is called an egg hunter, uh, return oriented programming egg hunter. So, so basically an egg hunter is uh, responsible of finding other gadgets in memory so that you can basically form your entire, uh, the entire uh, payload in memory. So that's pretty much what we plan to do in the future, hopefully. And thanks for your time. If you have any questions, No questions? No questions? I think, I think up here you asked what kind of library we used oh, yeah. on, on the iPhone, right? Uh, it was WebKit. Yeah. Yeah. How, how big it is? Yeah, you, you, saw the, you saw the compiled payload on the, on the screen, right? I, think, I don't know. Um, I think uh, it was about 1,040 bytes, if I remember correctly. Anybody else? Yep. How long is it for uh, the wolf to, to find the gadgets? Uh, okay, the, the wolf is actually the compiler, so it doesn't locate the gadgets. Are you asking how long the compile time for the gadgets are? Okay. So the, the compile time um, really is, um, it can be improved at the moment. So it's uh, on the order of minutes, usually per statement. Uh, but this is because it's uh, kind of an ugly construction. I trigger STP externally every time. I write to temporary files and all that kind of things. So this can be, this can be improved. Um, also, uh, if, if we get, um, the number of side effects minimized up front, this will improve as well. But um, to be honest, compile time isn't an issue in my, in my opinion at least. Um, I can do something else while um, the compiler is working for me. As long as it's correct and it is finished in a finite amount of time, it's okay. Yeah, basic, basically, you always have to think that um, doing this work uh, is all done because you can spend your time with doing more useful things than going through IDBs and searching for specific instruction sequences and putting them together later on. Therefore, we did that so that we can spend the time with cooler things to do than this. Anyone else? Mm, nope. Okay. 
thanks a lot for being here.